Okay, so I'm gonna work out three examples for you. Um, remember, when we do these types of problems, graphing a system of equations, we're either gonna have uh, one of three things happen. We're gonna have a point of intersection, we're gonna have two parallel lines, so there's no solution, no point of intersection, and we're gonna have maybe the same line, so an infinitely many number of solutions, okay? So let's look at this first example. Here are the two lines that I've given you. Um, this one you learned was called slope, intercept form. And the reason it's called slope intercept form is this guy right here tells you what to graph on the y-axis. So let's go to the y-axis and let's graph three. And then this guy right here tells you what the slope is. Now let's make it a fraction. And anytime you need to make a number of fraction, you can put it over one because dividing by one is itself. But what this is telling me is come down to and to the right one from this number. So again, down two over one from positive three. So I'm gonna go down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. And I'm gonna use a straight edge to draw the equation of my line. Now, if you're using Alex, it'll give you a, a little line editor so you can draw a line as well. Okay, then in the previous unit, you also learned this form, and this is called standard form. Now they tell you, if an equation is in standard form, try to find the intercepts. So the x-intercept is when you make the y value equal to zero. So I'm gonna write this whole equation again, but this time I'm gonna make y equal to zero. So I get three x equals two. So that makes uh, x equal to two thirds. Okay, and then so that means I can graph the point two thirds zero, and I can do the y-intercept, which means make the x value equal to zero. So I'm writing this entire equation again, except with a, the x value made equal to zero. And so I get negative y equals two. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one, and I get y equals negative two. Okay, now you may not like standard form, that may not be your preferred form. So another way to do this is to write this equation in slope intercept form. So maybe you decide, you know what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides and I'm gonna put the three X out in front. So it's negative three X plus two. And then I have to get rid of this negative one right here. So I'm gonna divide everything by negative one and I get y equals positive three x minus two. And what that allows me to do is graph in slope intercept form, kind of like what I did with this problem right here. So I can either make x equal to zero and, excuse me, make x equal to zero and solve. So I get x equals zero, y equals negative two. And then make y equal to zero and get the x value, which I get like two thirds, something in there. But that's kind of uneven, right? So maybe we don't wanna do that. So maybe we just rewrite the equation in the slope intercept form. That tells me graph negative two. This tells me go up three and over one from negative two. So I have this and check that out. Here's negative two, up three and over one. I can connect all these three points that I have on my paper and check it out. They intersect at this point right here. So the solution is one, one. And you learned in a previous unit that when you're checking a solution, that means plug it in and see if it works. So if I plug in X for one, negative two times one plus three, do I get one? I do. Three times one is three minus one. Do you get two? You do. So therefore, one, one is a solution for both of these and is where these lines intersect. Okay, let me try another one. I have these two lines right here. Okay, again, this one is in slope intercept form. So we can maybe uh, do the Y intercept. That means where the uh, actual point is on the Y axis. And then of course our slope. So that's telling me go to the y-axis, graph negative two, and then go up two and over one, up two and over one, and connect those points. So that's what I'm gonna do with my straight edge right here. Okay, put some little arrows. And then we're gonna go to the next equation. Now, the next equation, again, it's in standard form. If I want to find the x-intercept, that means make your y value equal to zero and that becomes negative four X plus zero equals zero. So if we divide by negative four, we get X equals zero. So when I 
get x is zero, that means y is zero as well. Oh, unfortunately, that probably means when I plug in y is zero, I'm gonna get x is zero. So maybe doing standard form wasn't the best way to do this problem. So maybe I do want to just go ahead and write this equation on my paper and then try to get it into slope intercept form. So I want to keep the y where it is. I'm going to add 4x to this side. Okay, so I get 2y equals 4x. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get y equals 2x. So what's my y-intercept? Well, I don't see any y-intercept. It's 0. And then what's my slope? To go up 2 and over 1. So notice I started this point and I go up 2 over 1. What are you noticing about these two lines that I just graphed here? I have two lines. They have the exact same slope but different y-intercepts. And when you have two lines that have the same slope, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, that they started at different points, they are never going to intersect. These are parallel lines, so we are going to answer no solution if we're asked what is the number of solutions or what is the solution. We're going to say there are none. Okay? Let's just do one more together just so that you have an example of each. Again, this guy right here, slope-intercept form. There's my intercept, my y-intercept, so that's what I'm going to graph on the y-axis. Here's my slope. It's telling me come down five and then over two. So down five and over two and down five and over two. I always like to graph three points, even though you only need two points to graph a line. I just think it makes it a little bit easier for you to graph um, so that we can connect our three points. So, oops, I missed it entirely. That wasn't one of my best things ever. Okay, so we'll just make it a little thicker so they all connect. Okay, and then over on this side, oh, we got glorious standard form again, and standard form tells me, go ahead and try the intercept way of finding the problem. So I'm going to make y equal to zero. So two times zero is zero. So if you want to write that, you can. And so you get 5x equals 10, and then we're going to divide by 5. So we get x equals 2, so that means when I get 2, the y value is 0. That is what's called my x-intercept. And notice, that's the same point right there. Well, let's get the y-intercept as well. And the way to do that is to make your x value equal to 0. So we're going to do the same thing. And then we get 0 plus 2y equals 10, and 0 plus anything is just itself. So we divide by 2 on both sides, and we got y equals 5. So when I made x equal to 0, I get that y equals 5. What do you notice about that? I just graphed the same two points, and when I connect it, it's the exact same line. Now, if, again, you were looking at this line right here at the top, and you're like, you know what? I really just don't like graphing using the intercepts. I like slope-intercept form. Well, if you did that, you would have to subtract 5x from both sides. And remember, we always like to put the, the x value out in front because it's mx plus b. And then... We would go in there and we'd go, all right, we'll divide everything by 2. Divide this by 2. Divide this by 2. We get y equals negative 5 halves x plus 5, which is the exact same line we have up there. So if I was to rewrite this in slope-intercept form, I get the exact same line, which is the exact same thing I graphed. So therefore, when we're asked how many solutions are there, we say infinitely many solutions. We don't say any solutions, okay? We don't say any solution because the point 41 is not on this line, okay? So any solution means I could pick any point in this entire grid. But infinitely many solutions, well, I have 5, 0. I have 1, 2. I have this point right here, 2, 0. I have this, you know, every point on this line is a valid solution. And how many points are on a line? An infinite number. So that's three examples. I hope that helps you out a little bit better on the topic that you're doing. Let me know if it helped.